Coming up, a driver is trapped in her mangled car after a high-speed car crash. Can you move your legs, Janine? Um, no. Okay. okay. All right. A sunny Coromandel day goes horribly wrong when a woman falls three metres from a deck. Ah! Okay. Ah! And a mother's worst nightmare becomes a reality. I'd like to treat her now. When her six-month-old daughter has a severe allergic reaction in Code 1. Mission one. All good. Skip, skip. Right, come up. Pilot Paul Robinson and the Fitianga rescue crew. And away we go. Are en route to the scene of a high-speed car crash, where a woman is in a critical condition. So what say? What time was the game? Say 15 minutes. Fifty-five year old Janine Leonard has had a head-on smash at 100 kilometers per hour, causing multiple life-threatening injuries. The crash site is 15 minutes flying time from Fitianga at the small rural community of Ngātea. I've been told there's a, been a motor bag accident on Highway 2. Uh, suggest there's just one patient, but you never know with car accidents. So we're just flying across the Coromandel Ranges now to get there. They were two and a half or three minutes out. You guys good for land? Set to red. All the traffic banked up over on the left. Ah, uh, sighted. Yeah, that'll be the ones there, I reckon. OK, I see ambulance on site. Yeah, OK, that's it. Roger. The chopper team can see the fire crews scrambling to extricate the woman from her mangled car. Be back, clear door. Yep, you'll clear door. Roger. Right, door is back and pinch. Clear's good. Clear's good. Roger. How's this position here? Uh, just continue forward, forward uh, three. Okay. Clear to go out there, Paul. Nice and flat. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm happy. Leaders okay. down, you guys are good. Clear out the front. Fuck off. The fire crews have ripped open what's left of the woman's car. But so far, the medics have not dared to move her due to suspected spinal injuries. Hello. Hi, you. This Hi. is Janine. How are we doing? Five year old female. She was coming um, this way down the road. A car came out of Fisher Road and they've collided. She was doing 100k. Okay. Um, What's her name? Janine. 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 Are your legs or can you move your legs, Janine? Um, no. Okay. All right. And she's had. She was eight out of ten pain. She's had thirty of fentanyl. Um, her last blood pressure was only eight hundred. Right. Got it come down from uh, one hundred and ten. Um, so we haven't given any more drugs. <laughs> but I'd say she'll need any before we can tighten these KED straps. Yeah. Um, and before we can extricate her. Janine's dropping blood pressure is a bad sign. She could have life-threatening internal bleeding. So we're going to just draw off a bit, bit of pain relief for Janine. She's been driving down Highway 2 and been hit by a car that came out of Fisher Road. So it was a nasty situation on a main highway. In Mission 2. Doctor on comms. Roger. Dr. Chris Duncan and the rescue crew are en route to a woman who has fallen three metres from a deck. Uh, we're looking at 50. Although 42-year-old Angela Young's condition is unknown, the team is certain there will be multiple fractures. The accident happened 15 minutes flying time from Auckland at a seaside dwelling near Coromandel. The age of the patient, they're in their 40s uh, and they've had a fall of three metres, which is quite a significant distance. Uh, our concern here is whether they've sustained uh, a head injury. And uh, Chris and I have just been running through a few drug um, regimes in case we need to intubate the patient using medication. 
So we're just uh, making a bit of a rough plan. Always willing to change that plan. You never know what you're going to find when you get there. So. All secure the landing. Yes, it's secure landing. And I'll just shut down. Yeah. Right. Uh, is that other vehicle here that's going to take us up the road? Or? Looks like one's coming in. Oh, the ute's coming in, but uh, that'll be for us. No worries. Will you shut down? Yep. Yeah. Right, you happy? Yep. Let's go. Cool. Tell me in the front if you want, mate. Yeah, sweet. The team needs to travel five minutes down the road to where the patient is still lying and so far unable to be moved. Oh, we'll go and have a look at her, right? Oh. Chris, yep. you wander on down, mate, and I'll yeah. sort this equipment out. You just Monitor's take... still in the back. I'll just yeah, take, the just take that and I'll make sure all our gear ends up here. I've oh, brought Chris with me. Hello. Hey. Your name? Hey, Ange, I'm Chris. I'm one of the doctors. What's happened, mate? Oh. She was taking flying, Lisa. Put in the shell. Oh, no. OK, so you've come off the top up there, have you? OK, and this is where you landed? And what's hurting at the moment? My shoulder. Which one? The right one. The right one. OK, cool. The obvious deformity in Ange's shoulder is a clear sign of a dislocation, an incredibly painful condition. <laughs> And no pain if I push on your chest here? Just up into that shoulder, eh? Yeah. The medical team will need to administer a high dose of pain medication before trying to relocate the shoulder so Ange can be transported to hospital. I reckon once we get this morphine in, we might draw up some ketamine. Yeah. Do you need a flush there as well, Chris? Yeah, we could. Something, something to cap that with as well. Relocation of the shoulder will be a difficult process, potentially complicated by other injuries caused by the impact. And how are you feeling there? Can you tell us? Weird. A bit weird. OK. <gasps> Pretty sore in the elbow as well. Okey dokey. It looks like there's an injury in the elbow, making the procedure even more painful. Okay. Okay. Ah! Okay. Ah! Should we give another, another 20? The small community of Ngātea has come to a standstill after Janine Leonard's crash. Janine's injuries range from a suspected spinal injury to an open fracture on the right knee. The medics are most concerned about her symptoms of internal bleeding. We've got the stretcher right here, so we'll just, we'll just try and lift you in one go straight out onto the okay, stretcher and make you more comfortable. Okay. Moving her will be very risky, but it needs to be done. Janine, this is going to hurt your abdomen, okay? And it's probably going to hurt you in your hips as well. All right? So we still haven't done that leg strap either. A special immobilising device called a KED is being used to eliminate any further damage to her spine. It's a painful but necessary procedure. Ah, oh, sorry, Janine. Okay. I just, I like yeah. it, but I just can't yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> oh, right. Ah. Doing well, Janine. So we're going to need someone to support the, the both of the knees. We're, right, you want to bring your stretcher down, Carl? Oh. Yeah, I think um, we'll get some guys in here, eh? Yeah. Oh, my knee, yeah. my knee! Janine's right knee has been smashed open, and despite the morphine, it feels like it's on fire. You can take that leg if you like. Yep. We're, ah. we're going to try and just go straight onto the stretcher like that. Two, three. Good. All right, keep going. In a seaside home near Coromandel, advanced paramedic Chris Deacon and Dr Chris Duncan are preparing to reset Angela Young's dislocated shoulder. It's a painful procedure at the best of times, but Dr Duncan is worried that other major injuries will make it even tougher on Ange. The problem is, Chris, I think that elbow is damaged as well. Yes. So I think trying to put any significant traction to relocate a shoulder is going to be yeah. tricky. Yeah. yeah. This is a wee little oxygen mask I'm just popping on you, yeah? OK? 
But if they leave the shoulder as it is, getting her on board and flying to hospital will be an agonising process. Family-wise, this is going to be a wee bit sore while we do this, and she might shout a wee bit while we're doing it. OK, just to let you know before we start. You right there, mate? Yep. Good. Don't give anyone a fright. And you're just going to hold there gently. Oh. Just keep that uh, elbow here, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Good. Good. Ah. They've managed to relocate the shoulder, which will ease her pain slightly. Three. Ah. You're doing good there, mate. Ah. But they are far from yeah, out of the woods. Ah. That's good, Ange. That's good. Cheers, thanks. Good. You're doing good. Good, 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 good. good. One, two, three. That shoulder on the right-hand side may well be dislocated or broken. She also looks like she's got an injury to her elbow as well. But from an assessment of when we arrived, although she's been unlucky to fall off the deck, I think she's been quite lucky in that it just seems to be her shoulder and her elbow that are injured. And that's where we're up to. At last, Ange is being loaded into the ambulance, watched closely by her four-year-old son. How are we doing, mate? Sorry. Are you okay? Mum's alright. She just hurt this shoulder here and her elbow here, mate. Alright? Would you like to give Mum a kiss on the cheek? Good man. Good man. Right, Mum? Alright. Hopefully, when he sees his mum again, she won't be suffering such terrible pain. And? Do me a favour and take five big breaths in and out for me. In mission three, crewman Murray Piper and advanced paramedic Barry Watkin are responding to an event that's every parent's worst nightmare. Call from ambulance to go to uh, Kennedy Bay. Just the details that we got is a uh, six-month-old child uh, query having a reaction to some sort of food allergy. Katha Wood has had a severe allergic reaction and is in danger of suffocation or cardiac arrest. Fortunately, Katha and her mum are just 10 minutes flying time north of Fitianga at Kennedy Bay. Four sets of kill boys. Yep. This is Kennedy Bay as we're coming into it now. Well, you can see the ambulance here now. Oh, yep. Yeah. It's actually in the centre of those houses here, about 300 metres beyond it. So but Sydney right hand turn bus and the only hazards I can see there is the wires on the other side of the road as we come into the approach. Right there. Something about here guys? Yep, it's down there, it's good. Alright, it's good subject now. Yeah, it's good, it's down. Cool. And your family down. Find the cow petty's voice. Yep, it's plenty of them. Thanks, mate. Paramedic Barry Watkin knows that any allergic reaction in a young baby can be life-threatening and needs to be treated as soon as possible. Hello. Um, thank you about lunchtime. They gave us an egg. Yep. And about the rest of the month can probably tell you more. And when did this rash start? Uh, within half an hour of the egg. Right. Got a lot of heat there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You having a rough time, little yeah. sausage? Barry's worried the allergic reaction may affect Kayla's breathing or even her heart. She needs an adrenaline injection now. So all we need is to uh, use a one mil syringe so, yeah. and, and to be safe and just take out half a mil half from a it. Mil, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What we're just talking about is we've, I'm just doing a more conservative approach with the adrenaline. It's only about half an hour to hospital at Waikato there, yeah. but I mean, it's just, I'd like to treat her now because yeah. no. now the treatment is needed, I think, you know. Near Coromandel, Angela Young, who suffered severe injuries in a three-metre fall, is on her way to the rescue chopper. How you doing, Angela? You good there, mate? We're going to move you out of this ambulance and into the back of our helicopter. Angela's friend Debbie will comfort her on the journey to hospital, where her partner and other family members will be waiting. Yeah, nice and clear down there. Beautiful. About 30, what, 25, 30 minutes? Yeah, it's 
it should be about 30. We've gone to Ange today, who's had a fall from three metres, and uh, in anyone's language, that's quite significant. The initial uh, crew at the scene have called a status two, which in, in light of uh, what's happened is perfectly reasonable. And in terms of the injuries that she has, we're concerned about her neck because of the fall height, and we're uncertain whether she has a dislocation or a dislocation and a fracture of either the elbow and the shoulder, but certainly she could have any combination of injuries there. Are you guys all good set for the back? We're set. Good stuff. Shutting down in 40 seconds. Ange has finally arrived at hospital. Her friend is greatly relieved that they are now just moments away from the ED. So we've just dropped Ange off. She's feeling nice and comfortable with the medicines that we've given her, and the team here are checking her over and getting her to go for some x-rays of her shoulder and her elbow to look to see whether there's been any broken bones there or whether there's any dislocation. And her family, who've been off motor racing today, have just arrived to see her as well, and they're nice and happy that she's nice and comfortable. At Kennedy Bay, paramedic Barry Watkin is about to administer life-saving medication to six-month-old Kaitha Wood, who's had a severe allergic reaction to eating egg. She's not taking any medicines or anything at the moment, hasn't had palm oil or anything like that. Barry will use a dose of adrenaline to minimise the chance of potentially lethal breathing or heart problems. Here we go. Have you got Jared's number? Distract her with the rubbing on that leg, if you would. Sorry, honey. All done. Sorry, honey. It's a, it's a sting. Sorry, honey, we're just going to rub that in. Sorry about that. No, I'm sorry. Okay. It's got adrenaline in the thigh. But, uh, it's quite, it stings quite a bit, but I think it should be helpful for that situation. The adrenaline will give the crew time to get Kaitha to hospital, where doctors can give her a full assessment and administer ongoing treatment. We'll get you sorted. When we lift you in the helicopter, I may have to drop your head slightly so we don't bump you on the head up here. Right. It's been a big upset for friends and family, but they are grateful that Barry and the crew have been able to prevent things from getting much worse for young Kaitha. I wish I'd screw in her It will bump along off. Pick it up. Got to come to the harbour, it'll be a uh, nose right to left, and we'll make it out Cedar Harbour. Pick it up, not quite in ten. In Ngātea, Janine Leonard has just been extricated from her mangled vehicle. The medics are still very concerned about her abdominal pain, which could signal bleeding or lacerated internal organs. Can you take a deep breath? Yes. Oh. OK. That hurts a bit, does it? OK. Rightio then. We'll go in. One, two, three. The team must move swiftly, as Janine's condition could rapidly get worse. Right door shut. Hey, am I happy? Yep, happy. OK, coming up. It's going to come a little bit left. I don't have tail right. Tail is pink right. What's our flight time? Uh, 17 minutes. OK. Where'd she hit your head, Bruce? She said it was cars sort of pulling out of that Fisher Road. Yep. You could have some internal bleeding now, I reckon. Anyone has abrasions over the abdo, eh? It's uh, a bit of a sign to see some internal trauma. Pretty good sign. OK. She's injured a right knee, but probably more importantly is, is the um, tenderness of that across her abdomen and lower chest, which could mean internal organs have been damaged or affected. Control with back rescue one landing, quite good. Janine has finally made it to hospital, 
one and a half hours after the initial call out. Two months later, back at home, Janine is being cared for by friends and family. She is still recovering after a day she thought was going to be her last. I thought I was going to die. That, that's what I felt like. First, firstly, because I, I thought the car was going to blow up, so I was absolutely beside myself. Then I started hyperventilating, I'm sure I did, thinking, well, oh, this is it. Fortunately, Janine made it, but still suffered traumatic injuries. Most of my kneecap was shattered. They've left a, a small part in, in there. They said it was a small part. All the rest has been obviously removed. With my tummy, they said there was a hernia, and the bowel had actually came through the hernia, and that's what they were concerned about, was that was their concern. While the physical pain subsided, the emotional toll while in hospital still haunts her and her sons. There were days where I probably cried cried all day and I couldn't stop it. I think the boys tried to hold it together, I think it was on the second day. They really fell to pieces and um, that was that was hard for me. Probably a lot of them were what ifs, but the what ifs didn't happen and I kept trying to focus back on you were here and you know it could have been it could have been far worse. And Janine appreciates that what made the difference was the ones that helped get her to hospital in time. Until you've actually been in a situation like that, you really don't appreciate what they put into it in here and what they do do. As suspected, Angela Young suffered a fracture in her shoulder, as well as a dislocation, and is recovering slowly through physiotherapy. Baby Katha Wood has recovered fully from her allergic reaction, but must now stay clear of eggs. For Janine, the entire experience has given her a new lease on life. Everybody that was there on the day, the general public too, just, um, I just can't thank them enough. It makes you think, gives you a different perspective on life.